Okay, picture this on a boat. Ahoy! Just look there under the gunwale for me. Under the what? There, on the starboard side, under the gunwale, in front of the cockpit locker. Huh? And while you're at it, just um, trim the, the, the jib sheet as well. Can you speak English, please? You mean I must pull this thing in my jiggy? Can you imagine the chaos on a boat if that is the type of language it flies around? I think there's a good reason why there should be a universal language and names for everything on a boat. Just to avoid complete chaos and misunderstandings. Feel the spray of the waves on my face. Atlantic Indian Ocean Blue. Whoa, land in sight to stubborn. Got me home from where I roam. the basics right and left starboard and port now how did starboard come about in the olden days the the olden ships used to have like a steering what they used to call a steering board on the right hand side at the back of the boat um, mainly because like today most people are right-handed so that was situated on the right back hand side and they used to steer the, the boat on that side and that is where the name steering board came from but the olden people used to slang everything so a steering board was just too much to say and sounded too long and that is where starboard is like steer board starboard that is where starboard came from and port side used to be larboard side but in heavy seas and winds and all the noise that goes onto a boat i mean starboard and larboard sounded so much alike so they decided against that one okay nautical terms um Port means the opening on the left hand side of the boat where cargo used to get loaded onto. So that is how the, how larboard used to become the port side because they used to park on the left hand side and load the, the cargo in there and that became the port side. So it was just easy to refer to that side eventually as just port side. Okay, bow derives from the old um, German Dutch bog the word bog which means shoulders or arms so they used to, used to refer to that as the the shoulders of the boat carrying the hull of the boat the shoulders so that is where the bow comes from from the bog okay stern is the rear of the boat and the rear comes from the old nordic stjorn or i don't know exactly how to pronounce it but it means steering and steering was normally done from the back of the boat and that is where stern comes from. Okay, they head. I mean, have you ever how are they? Why do they call a toilet a head? Can you imagine? I mean, this is a head. Okay, the the the, the, the toilets used to in the olden days used to be located towards the the, the front of the boat because you can imagine the wind coming from the back because that is how you steer a boat so all the wind used to blow all the the nastiness away so that the cruise toilets were always in the front or the bathrooms were always in the front of the boat so that used to just blow away whatever foul odor they might have. okay now we get to rigging now there's a lot of confusion as well when is it a rope when is it a cable when is it a sheet i mean can you imagine they call it sheets as well so normally when a piece of rope is dedicated to a certain function, then it becomes a line. Okay, a very thick line is commonly called a cable. Okay, now when the line becomes a sheet, that is normally when it's attached to a sail. So in other words, it, it controls the sail or, or it um, 
adjust the, the size of the sail or whatever, then it becomes a sheet. So a, a, a rope that is tied to the mainsail would become then the mainsail sheet. Okay, once the uh, rope is made of wire, it, it, it remains, it, it keeps its name, it's a rope wire, like a halyard. Okay, so all these would be the running rigging. In other words, it's movable. You can move it um, to change course or whatever. Okay, the standing rigging is normally cables or wires, and that is basically they never once they they fasten, they stay that way. That's to keep the mast in position the, from the front and the back and from the side. So that would be the standing rigging. Okay, now to some more sailing language. Tack. You always hear about tacking and jibing. When is it tacking and when is it jibing or what does it mean? Okay, tacking is when you sail upwind. So if you're, you can never sail directly into the wind. There's just no way that you can do that. So you need to, to, to sail it in a zigzag ma manner. So if the wind comes from your left hand side, then it, it's port tacking. And if it comes from your right hand side, it's starboard tacking. So that is your course to steer forward as in a zigzag m m movement and the wind is coming from the front. That is when you tack. When you jibe is the opposite as the wind is coming from the back. So then you're j jibing. Okay, then you, you're, it's like your, your terminology um, beating into the wind or tacking into the wind. That is that motion of going in a zigzag 45 degree angle Okay, reefing. You often hear reefing on all the sailing channels. What does reefing mean? In layman's terms, um, you're going to hear it in heavy winds when the knots are just flying all over the place. So it's going to be very fast sailing. Then you need to get your sail smaller. And that is basically the, what reefing means, is to make your sail smaller. And the one thing I also know is we're going to have a one-line reefing system. So basically it means that both ends of the sail goes down at the same time by using one line. Okay, another terminology is dead reckoning. Um, for many years the practice of keeping a log based on estimate speeds etc etc was called deducted rec reckoning. But again, I think um, sailors were pretty lazy at, at talking so they used to abbreviate, shorten or slang, whatever they could get hold of. So that became dead reckoning. So dragging anchor, um, I think it's both an embarrassing and scary thing to think about. Um, that's basically when your anchor didn't grip properly so, and, it, and it drags along the bottom of the sea. So that's dragging your anchor. Okay, heave to, heave to is um, basically slowing down or, or stopping. Okay, a knot. Where did a knot? Where did that word come from? Um, that came from tying, measuring the boat speed by tying knots at certain intervals or equal intervals onto the piece of rope. And at the end, you normally have something that's weighted, a little anchor or something, throwing it overboard, and then you allow this um, rope to run freely for a certain amount of time. And then they would count, obviously, the amount of knots to determine the speed. Nautical. That comes from a Greek word. The Greek word naughty, which means a sailor. Okay, apparent wind is um, what you feel, the, the wind that you feel against you. Another term that you often hear all these people talk about is beam reach. Basically, um, your beam is the, the midsection of your boat, so that is the wind is coming across the beam. It's from one side to the other side. Bear away, and that is steering away from the wind. Okay, then there's the other two, wind, windward and leeward. Windward is the direction fr from which the wind comes, and leeward is away from the direction that the wind blows. Oh, just a little bit little bit of interesting bits and bobs. The acronym RADAR. What does RADAR stand for? Radio Detecting and Ranging. SCUBA stands for Self-Contained Underwater Breathing App Apparatus. And my favorite, SOS. 
not save our ship will save our souls. Um, in Morse code, the SOS just has a very, very unique sound. And that's why they allocated that for distress. Okay, and then um, some phrases that actually originated in the sailing industry in the olden days. Clean bill of health. Um, the sailors were less than hygienic in those years. Obviously, bathing facilities weren't available. So sometimes the port or the captain master needed a medical certificate that they had to present that they do not carry any contagious diseases or anything and the likes. The other one is feeling blue. That also comes from the sailing industry. When a ship would lose uh, its captain during a voyage, it would uh, raise a blue flag and it would paint a blue line around the hull. Another one, pipe down. Pipe down was normally the last signal from the bosun's pipe each day, which meant the crew must now settle. It's time to go to sleep. Another one, over the barrel. Or we are over a barrel. That's normally when things aren't going too well. On the ships, uh, the crews were, I think they were a rowdy bunch to control, so if they did anything to the dislike of a captain, they would be put over a, a, a barrel and they would be whipped severely. So that things didn't go very well when it's loose cannon. <laughs> I think we all know a couple of, couple of those ones. they normally very unpredictable and sometimes dangerous people. Sometimes the cannons used to come, I mean you can just imagine with all the, the ups and downs, the cannons used to come loose from the lashings which became very dangerous and the crews had their hands full to get that big boy fastened down back onto the floorboards again. The square meal also comes from the sailing industry. Um, they used to have wooden boards that they used to get served their, their food on and that's where a square meal comes from. Son of a gun, also one of my funny ones. Um, the crew sometimes used to sneak ladies of leisure onto the boat. Kind of good spot for, for their raunchiness used to be between the cannons. And then sometimes, you know, these ladies, or I think most cases, they would fall pregnant. And um, obviously none of these crew members would ever own up to being the father. And that's where the saying comes from, son of a gun, between the guns. And yeah, I used to think that all these old yachties used to sound either cool or, or snobbish when they talk this weird language. But as I tried to illustrate just now, it can I think it can be chaotic and very confusing if everybody just had their own language on the boat. So let's see. Um, the basic parts of a boat. There's going to be weird names popping up here, but let me show you some of the names. Okay, let's start with okay, the top end of the sail. I mean, we've all got a head on our shoulders, so that is called the head which is quite self-explanatory. And then the long pole, it's not a long pole as I tried to illustrate just now. It is commonly known as a mast. So that would be your mast. The long pole down there. Your main sails. as it is commonly known as the main sail. So this is the biggest sail on the boat. And then you've got the, the front sail, which is called either the head sail. And it can be known as the jib. or the Genoa. Now, two episodes ago, he quite elaborately explained or spoke about all the various cells, specifically about the code D and the code zero. 
So I'm not going to elaborate too much on that, but um, yeah, as I said, there was quite a bit spoken about it. Then, as we've got the head of the cell, we've got the bottom of the cell, which is called the foot. Self-explanatory again. Now comes the weird bit. I mean, have you ever heard of leech? I mean, a leech is something that sucks blood, but they call this part of the cell the leech. So the part furthest away from the boom is called the leech. And then the part closest to the boom, I'm going to just find my little piece of paper here. Okay, and the part onto the boom is called the luff. Again, I mean, who calls a part of a cell a luff? But it's called the luff. Then we've got the boarding ladder. Which is this little thingamajig there, is your boarding ladder. Where's my boom? The boom is this bottom part. Okay, that is your boom over there, the pole there. Then we've got, let's start with these. Okay, when you stand behind something and it has to move forward, you push it, and this is the way I remember these things. The rail there at the back is called a push bit for pushing forward. And if you're in front of something and you need to drag it behind you, you pull it. So that kind of makes sense to call that the pulpit. You've got your push bit and your pulpit. And then another thing that you have here is the bow sprit. For interest's sake, um, this is what you're going to put your furling roller on, um, right in the front here that we're going to have done. Transom is where you step onto the back of the boat, or the back of the boat is called, that back section there is the transom. Then we've got the the back end of the boat is the stern, as I mentioned earlier on. Okay, and the area that we're going to be loading full of solar panels is called the coach roof, which is that little roof over there. And that is where we're going to put all our solar panels on. Well, a lot of them in any way. And then we've got the winch. A winch is that silver thing that you turn the rope around and you pull or the sheet or whatever and you pull it just makes it easier and the winch I'm just going to measure is that little thing over there but there's quite a couple of winches on a boat now that is a winch there and then a propeller okay now yeah that is the propeller. Now part of the propeller, let me just put that one in there, and then this back piece here is the anode. So that little piece there is a shaft anode. And another anode that we have is a sacrificial anode, which is located roughly there on the boat. And then we've got another anode, which is the rudder anode. Now your rudder, I'll indicate that little thingy there, is the rudder anode. Let me just make it like that. That is called the rudder anode. 
Then we've got this cake, which is the front bit over there. And the actual rudder is the one that moves around like that. So that would be the rudder. Can you imagine there are just so many parts on that one tiny little area of the boat? Okay, let's see where we are now. A guardrail would be this rail over there is called a guardrail. Oh, and I have forgotten about the main important part when you're under motor, and that is the actual propeller which is situated there. So my page is getting very cramped now. Okay, let's try and fit another one on here. Let's see. A cleat. That thingamabob there. I should not be talking about thingamabobs or thingamajiggies anymore. Is called a cleat. So that is a roughly, I think we're running out of space here now, so I think we're going to move on to another picture. But isn't this just an awesome picture of the Leopard 45? Just got such a nice profile. Okay, now we've got a little bit more space. So we've got a little mona hole here, and um, I've obviously indicated where the parts are that we've already spoken or that we've already covered. So let's look at this. We've got stays. Stays is, as I said previously, is part of your standing rigging. That is the part that keeps the mast from either going forwards or backwards or falling sideways. So needless to say, the one at the back is called a back stay. And that would be that area there is your back stay. The area where everybody sits and socials is the cockpit area and that would be that area there is the cockpit area. Okay, and like a like a car and everything else we've got a steering wheel. So where's my steering wheel? Your steering wheel is located there and it's located differently but always at the rear. So your steering wheel is there. And while we're in the cockpit, your cockpit floor is commonly known as the cockpit sole. So I'm just going to put this over there. So that would refer to the actual floor is the cockpit floor. Your companion way on a mona hole is where you go down the stairs into the saloon. That is called a companion way. So that is also located in the cockpit area. So that roughly about there is your companion way. And then you've got your front door to a mona hole is you've got a sliding section that goes that away and then you've got like a hatch here that you slot up and, you, and that keep, uh, keeps the water from going into into the boat as well. So the top section that you slide back to open is called a sliding hatch which is quite easy to remember. So that would be here, at the, that would be there, the sliding hatch and then the stuff that you actually take out, the, the door, it slides, it slots in like that, is called a washboard. I don't know why it's called a washboard, but it's called a washboard. And that is your, your front door to, to the saloon. Then we've got a rubbing strake, which I, is, oh jeez, this is getting rather sticky. Your rubbing strake, I think another language for it, is your tow rail. So that is this little lip section here. Where, and I think why it's called a tow rail as well, so you bump your toes. It's, it's, it's right on the edge of the side on the boat. 
And then we've got jammers. Now jammers is where you're running rigging. So all the sails, all the ropes that comes to the back, they've got, it's, it's a thing that you lift up and then well, the, the ropes come through it. So when it lip, lifts up, it, it flows freely. And when you slot it down, it breaks it. It stops the, the ropes from moving. That's what it jams the rope then basically. So that is called a jammer. And they are situated right over there. So that's called the jammers. And then you've got the kicker or the van. Why it's called that, I've got absolutely no idea. I try to Google most of the stuff to find out where the oranges are, or where they originate from. So that thing there, thing on my duke again, is called a kicker or a van. Okay, so that is it connects the boom here to the bottom of the mast. So there you've got that. Um, the next thing we have here is this which is very self-explanatory is your side deck so it's it's basically what it says yeah it's on the side of your deck so it's that walkway there that is called your side deck your backstay as I said keeps the mast upright it doesn't fall backwards and um, sideways as well we've got the shroud they're called a shroud as well which keeps the mast from going left or right. So that is either a shroud or a stay. They're called a shroud or a stay. Okay, then we get your uprights here are called stanchions. And then at the top there, it's called railing. And then, as we said previously, the front of the boat, where the reinforcement has to go, should we go to Antarctica, is the bow. And then a very important part of the boat, obviously, is the brakes. The anchor, well not really brakes, it's just to keep the boat in one spot, is the anchor. And we will be putting in a mantis anchor, as Frick mentioned in a previous episode. And as I mentioned just now, the push pit and the pulpit is those rails there. And then we've got the furling. Where's my furling drum? There we've got that. That is the drum or the mechanism that you can fill your Genoa or your Jip or your Code D or your Code Zero or whatever from there. So it just rolls up on this, it's normally the front stay that it rolls up onto. So that's the furling drum that turns around like that. And then we have the front, as we said, the back stay. And we've got the fore stay, which is in the front, that keeps the mast also from going backwards. So there's your fore stay and your back stay. So those are those two going up there. Then as I mentioned earlier on, um, your rub, your rubbing stroke can be referred to as a tow rail as well. Okay, another thing that we have here is right over there is another winch. So that would be a winch. And we put it over there. Your gooseneck very appropriately called, that is where your boom and your mast joins. That is a gooseneck. It kind of has the shape of a gooseneck, uh, hence the name gooseneck. Hatch, that's all over the boat. Your aft hatch and your stern hatch and all those different hatches. It's your openings, it's your your air your skylights, your windows that can open up at the top of the boat. Okay, then right in the front here, um, it's like a pulley type of thing that the rope goes around to. It's called a windlass. So that is 
situate it right over there. Okay, another winch. There's a couple of winches on the boat, which would be your jib sheet winch. So this rope coming all the way around here. There we go. Right at the steering. Easy to control. So that would be your gypsy winch there. Then we've got here on the boat, which is now not drawn into this this picture here, there's like a, a rail that runs across here roughly with a shackle kind of thing in here with your your jib sheet in it. So that would be that little thing there would be called the jib or the Genoa car and the car runs on a track and that actual track right over here that that thing runs up and down so it, you can move the, 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 the lines on that now the it changes the sheet oh. that would be that there so I think We've got a full page again, so as you can see there is just so many parts and so many names and so many things happening on a boat that is scary, it's, and I haven't even touched half of it. But let's see what else I can come up with. Okay, just a little bit, a couple of more, more things. As we all know, the, the top of the sail is the head, and the bottom is the foot. Okay, then we've got different parts on the cells. Um, the head is the top end. And then your furthest part away from the mast, that little section there, is called the clue. And then the section closest to the mast is called the tack. So that would also be the tack. And this would be the clue. Okay, then this is your obviously your main cell. And remember a line that is attached to a, 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 a cell that can change its course or its size is called a sheet. So this would be called the main cell sheet. The main cell sheet. So this has now become a sheet. And I spoke about reefing as well, as to change the size of the boat, so that these would be called your reefing points. Reef points. And this is a Kringle. Don't know why and where that name comes from. That little hole there is called a Kringle. Now your battens. This is a batten. And this is the batten pocket. Okay, so these are those lines that you see on the cell. This is basically to help stiffen so the cell can keep its shape. So it's a, it's like a like a like a pocket as it says it's a pocket and then this thing goes into the pocket it used to be wood um, they've got different materials that they put in there but it's stiff so it slides in there so the cell can keep its its, its shape then we've got yeah we've got the snap shackle it's called a snap shackle okay again this is the head and this is the foot Okay, now these little pagodies here are called Hanks. Oh, geez, now I've come up with a new name, Magodis. Can you believe that? This is a different furling system. Now, we've, we've got a roller furling. Remember that drum that we had here? So it rolls. You've got, you add the, well, you tie the, 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 the sheet there, and it rolls up. It folds up around that stay there. But if you don't have that, you've got the other option is to go the Hanks route. So it's these type of shackles 
that clips in. So you've got to pull the sail down and actually unhook it and stow it away. So that's the different furling method. It's the Hanks method. So you've got the furling method and the Hanks method. And I think this is, in a nutshell, some of the terminologies and sayings and names or whatever that goes with yachting. Basically, I haven't even touched the anchors. You've got no idea how many parts of anchor some of the anchors have. I haven't even gone below deck to the saloon and stuff, but I think I will cover that once the CISO is done and um, we do the grand tour. So I'll, I'll go through the, all the different names and terminology inside the boat then. As I said, there's just so, so many to remember. But um, what I would like you to do, um, to add to all those, where the sayings come from and all the names, and I'm sure there's lots of stories to tell. So please, um, like the video, subscribe, and then in the comments below, we'd like to hear your thoughts on different stories that you've heard, where the names come from, where they originated. I've obviously missed a huge amount of names and what stuff is called, so please just comment, comment, comment. Just let us know and tell us stories about where you heard what where the names came from. That would be very exciting to see all that. It, it would be, just be totally awesome. And then I'm going to post CISO is in production. It is just so amazing and we're getting photos and updates. Thank you Marcel and them. We're getting updates every week on the pictures and how the progress and I promise you you get gooseflesh. It's just amazing how they they built the boat. So I'll post one or two pictures here at the end as well. Yes, and I think that is in a natural. I've skimmed the top, I'm sure. I think there's a dictionary like this as far as yachting is concerned. But thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Blue, whoa, land in sight.